sip it nice and easy. All the other children slept and he didn't seem to sleep. And he seemed to be perfectly normal up until about 18 months old. As a matter of fact, he had a vocabulary of 60 words, which seemed to be very, very normal. Then between 18 months and two years old, he seemed to be more withdrawn, sitting in a playpen, like just looking at objects, basically tuned into objects more than people. And between that time, that 60-word vocabulary went down to nothing. He hopped on his both feet, you know, when he started walking, you know? And then he made inappropriate noises. So as a parent, you say, well, we look at each other and you say, we, we better take him someplace. This doctor had said to me, I think you have more than a sleeping problem. I, I think he might be autistic. And I never heard of the word before. I didn't have a clue of what it meant. Well, he diagnosed him as a classic autistic. And I didn't know what that was at the time. I thought he said autistic. We rebirthed him 12 hours a day. We creeped him, we crawled him. He used to spit and smell, so we put harsh smells and mild smells in the program. Uh, being that he didn't talk, we put peanut butter, globs of it on the top of his, on the roof of his mouth. Truthfully and basically, Peter was a, a very difficult. Peter didn't have the benefit of intensive early intervention. It really wasn't available back in the 1970s and 80s. The sad thing is, is that you, you would want so badly for your child to be cured if you could. And so when, when these miracle potential cures get put out there in the mainstream, you can understand why families might run after it. But some of them can be potentially dangerous and families are just so desperate. I'm very skeptical when somebody says this could be the cure for autism. We took Peter to this Father Diorio. He's a charismatic priest. He looks like a marble saint when you look at him. He blessed Peter. When he started to walk around the chur church, the priest, he came and he put his hands on his head so it seemed like he knew the source of the problem. Here's me, I thought, oh, he's cured, he's saved, you know. And my mother went to uh, Portugal, she went to Ireland, she went to St. Joseph in Canada, and she went to Lourdes. She okay. brought back the holy water. She said, I want you to rebathe him in that. And he got it and he dumped it down the toilet. He dumped that whole thing down the toilet. It was a guy from Mississippi, a preacher from Mississippi, another marble face. And uh, he, was, he was talking. And my son went into his uh, inappropriate noises. So he came to my aisle and he said, if he keeps that up, we'll have to make him leave. I said, like, I brought him here to be cured. You want to throw him out? You understand? So the marble-faced preacher up there says, bring him up here, sort of disturbance, you know? So I get up there with Peter, and Peter has to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so Peter says, bathroom, you know? So I said, I'll be right back. You say a prayer for your son every day, you know, every night, you know, and you, 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 wanna, you want something to happen, you know? You gotta wait. What's the right. Wait. When I take him on his rides through Staten Island along the waterfront, he relaxes, you know. And every time we go near water, I say, Pete, what's that? He says, water. And, and then on the way back, he sees Mike's place, the diner, and he'll tell you that he wants to eat. We're gonna get it. We're getting it. We're getting it. All right. And if you don't make that turn into Mike's diner, he'll turn the steering wheel into the other traffic. Peter is very intelligent in his own way, and let's face it, he enjoys his mother and father, and he, and he would love for us to see him all the time, you know. She's a great mother, a great mother. I'm sure that he's melancholy if he don't see us, I'm sure of that. Well, Sal passed away on December 13th. Well, the last conversation I had with Sal was a week before he passed away. Is this where Daddy was? He had said that, that he was back in the hospital and he hoped that uh, his whole thing was to get better and um, he had to live. He wanted to live to take.
of my son. Say goodbye, Dad. Say I love you, Dad. Uh, no, no, did you? Good talking. Yeah.